We have multiple new active regions on the Earth facing Sun right now, which is great news for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders who are prepping for field day. And we might just get another chance for a mini solar storm like we had last week for your roar photographers. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is really picking up. We have multiple active regions on the Earth facing Sun right now. You can count them. One, two, three, four regions. This is boosting solar flux to levels that we haven't seen all year. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I know you're prepping for field day and this is fantastic news because this is boosting the solar flux comparatively to levels that really don't concert with solar minimum conditions, so it's wonderful. So you should enjoy some decent radio propagation on Earth's day side. Now you aurora photographers, do you see this kind of remnant coronal hole, this dark region here? This might actually give us some fast wind and sporadic pockets, not a lot of strong fast wind. So it might only give us maybe active conditions if we're lucky, but it could give us some aurora uh, at high latitudes, maybe over the next week. Switching to your M flare threat meter, you can see back on June 9th was when we first saw that X ray flux and by proxy the solar flux ramp up due to region 2713 as it rotated into Earth view. Now, since then, the X ray flux has kind of slowly been ramping up. That's because we've had new regions rotating into Earth view and we've also had two regions kind of emerge on the Sun's surface. And that has boosted solar flux. We are now sitting at the B floor, which is so fantastic considering this is supposed to be a solar minimum sun. So radio propagation is going to be great this week. These conditions should last pretty much through the weekend before things begin to die down just a little. And I consider it a gift for field day. Switching to your solar storm conditions, we've been pretty quiet as of late and that's pretty much been the story, except for on the 18th. We we did get hit by some fast solar wind that actually bumped us up to storm levels for a moment, which was kind of surprising to me that we bumped that high. And it was wonderful because some aurora photographers were actually able to get some shots of the aurora. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long. We bumped back down to active conditions and then back down to unsettled conditions. And that's pretty much when been the story since then. And this will continue. Uh, we expect unsettled conditions. We might get another bump up right around the 23rd. I don't know if it's going to get us up to storm levels again. It might bring us up to active conditions. We might get another chance for some aurora photographers to get more shots in at high latitudes especially. And then things will calm back down. But the next time we get a chance for a decent sized solar storm that could reach mid latitudes is going to be hmm, probably in about 7 to 10 days. And although this mini solar storm didn't last all that long, and it happened so close to the summer solstice with that summer sun in the northern hemisphere, you Aurora field reporters were out in force and you got some gorgeous photos along with some beautiful noctilucent clouds. So here's some shots in Manitoba, Canada. And we had multiple places in Alberta. And we had some shots that dropped down into the northern part of the United States. Here's North Dakota, along with some gorgeous noctilucent clouds. We also saw it in Seattle. And we might have even caught a glimpse of some aurora glow down in, in Colorado. And then just before the storm hit, there's some gorgeous uh, aurora australis shots down over the southern ocean. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see immediately is that big bright region in the center disk right there. That is the region that, that's now rotated into Earth view, barely off of the sun's east limb from the Earth's point of view. It's not a numbered region, so it's really just giving us some brightness. It's not really a solar storm producer, so we're not expecting that. But that dark coronal hole beneath it sure is. That actually is sending some fast wind to stereo right now, and that will actually bring some fast wind to Earth again here in a little bit over a week. So we could be expecting a decent solar storm from this region, and uh, it could bring aurora down to mid latitudes and give you aurora photographers who have been just waiting for some good shots something to do.
Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that big coronal hole to rotate into the Earth strike zone a little bit later this week. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions, but we could get some active conditions right around the 23rd with even a possibility of a minor storm at high latitudes. So aurora is definitely possible. At mid latitudes, we're still only expecting unsettled conditions with only about a 25% chance of active conditions conditions. So your aurora chasers at mid-latitudes don't expect all that much from this coronal hole. For a bigger storm that's going to give you much better chance, we're going to have to wait for a little bit more than a week for that fast wind from that bigger coronal hole to rotate into position and give us a decent chance for aurora. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares, although we do have multiple numbered regions on the Earth-facing disk right now. This is fantastic news because it's bumping the solar flux up back into the 80s. My gosh, when have we seen the 80s? I think we had to go back to last year sometime. So this is fantastic news for your amateur radio operators and emergency responders who are prepping for field day. In fact, one of these regions, 2715, has actually been popping a few mini solar flares, so you might actually hear that on Earth's day side, hear some noise in the bands. Don't worry, it's not your gear, it's just the sun. And it's gonna, these conditions will continue easily through the weekend and early into early next Next week before things begin to die down a little bit. So all I can say is enjoy. Space weather this week has really picked up. We have four bright regions on the Earth-facing Sun right now that have boosted the solar flux back up into the 80s. We haven't seen conditions like this since pretty much last year. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders who are participating in field day, enjoy this boosted radio propagation for all of your exercises. I know it's going to help. And you might hear even a little bit of flare noise on the band, so don't worry. It's not your equipment. Now, you GPS operators, you're probably not quite as happy about the uh, boosted solar flux, especially at low latitudes, because I know that affects GPS reception for you folks. So be careful around dawn and dusk. You might have some glitches here and there, but pretty much only at low latitudes. Now, you aurora photographers, well, you've got a nice... Uh, chance for aurora at least at high latitudes just this past week and it looks like around the 23rd you'll get another chance small chance for aurora we might get a little mini solar storm it may not be as much as what you got last week but you know keep your batteries charged and then expect a bigger solar storm coming in a little bit more than a week that could easily give us aurora down to mid latitudes i'm tamitha scove thank you for watching